Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I want to go through a track I wrote for my new album, which will go live on Spotify on the 1st of October. I already uploaded it some time ago and you can listen to it up here and down here. So without further ado, let's get into it. For the opening of this piece, I used a technique called Tempo Rubato, where you're not necessarily stuck to the grid or to a click, but you have a more free flowing tempo. I made a video about this subject some time ago, but in short, what I did was I recorded a piano melody without a click and then when I made the orchestration I used the piano part as a reference instead of my click track. So here we are already a beat of the grid and it will get even worse towards the middle. And I did this to create a more of a realistic flowing uh, lyrical musical opening. Uh, so after I wrote this piano part, I orchestrated it in these strings. For thickness, I layered it with a synth pad, which is just following the chords of this section. I already have the counterpoint, let's say, I already have the flowing strings, so this is just a doubling for the sound effect of it. So the synth pad adds a little bit of warmth to the strings. And then when we are building towards the climax, it's a matter of adding small new elements every step along the way. So I start with a counter melody in the horns uh, with some brass chords. Uh, piano comes in and later on there's more percussion. And when we reach the climax, we have a run in the harp, uh, celesta and woodwinds to really add to this highest note of the melody. some choir in there as well on the loudest chords and there's one thing I want to point out and that's this these runs here so the notes they are a little bit off they are not straight sixteenths going up but that doesn't matter it's just that you have the feeling of there's a run going towards this top note <laughs> Another part where I use this same technique is in the, this next section where we have an emptier opening section with a cello melody with doubled by clarinet for warmth. And when we go to the second part of this, I have a similar thing going on in celesta, dulcimer and harp glissando. So the harp glissando is a recorded one and the other ones I added myself. Since you have three different types of runs, together they add to this sensation of there's a run going up and then it doesn't matter if they are not entirely the same. I think I would argue it would be even better not to have them exactly the same. So this is the first part where the melody of the middle section is coming in. And it's in the first and second violins doubled by the flute in the high octave and an octave below in the violas, celli and the English horn. And this melody is quite important for the rest of the piece and I'll just play it for you once and then I'll explain why. That's the most important part of it. And the melody is full of notes that start on the second of the chord. So it opens with G chord and the melody starts on an A. 
a lot of major sevens in there as well. For example, here we have a. There's a major seventh in the D chord going to the second in the same chord. And these types of intervals are very important later in the piece as well, because the ostinato I'm using is built from these notes. So this A to D jump is very important, because these notes are similar in all the chords I'm using in this melody. So this melody is carried over towards the ostinato later, which is already starting here. So it starts with synth and celesta and later on it's added in the flute and piccolo shorts as well and even in the uh, dulcimer. Um, so the ostinato that we hear here in the strings later on is already starting here and I will get into the notes of it later. just one thing to say about this transition and that is the fact that it is carried over by one thing and one thing only and that's the ping pong delay effect in the dulcimer so it's going from right to left back and forth basically this is the one thing that is staying in this one measure before the horns kick in with the crescendo talk about the string ostinato a little bit i already explained that the d and the a are the important notes that are carried over through every chord and this ostinato is built up from these notes so if we start from the ground up we have just the basis with the low accents going with the chords and then the celli have the same notes, but I added a little bit more of the triplet rhythm to them to make it a variation with the basses and have this like repeated cello sound going through it. Then in the violins, I have the main motive, let's say, which is A, D, which are the most important notes, then C sharp which is a note I'm using a lot as well, and is a nice transition from down to the A and back up. The variation. So this is the main motif of the string ostinato and I can, like I said, because these notes are common, I can carry this through throughout the entire thing. However, this was still a little bit, not to say boring, but I wanted to add one little layer, uh, which really finishes it as a whole. And this last thing to add are the violas, which are basically just playing the D, A, uh, D rhythm, sometimes alternating with an F sharp. which is not very exciting in itself, but it's an additional layer. Uh, and together with everything, it looks like a mess, but I think it sounds really nice. And it just adds it up to one more level. <laughs> play the string ostinato in the entire context of the entire piece uh, and I would leave out the viola, I really miss it. I think it sounds really a lot less than if I would have added it. What 
can you take from this is that I think it's very important when you're writing string ostinatos to think about them not as just one ensemble where you're having maybe a bass line and a top line, but really treat them as a string ensemble with five parts and try to come up with different parts for every instrument. I think you can achieve some great results that way. Now onto the next part of the ostinato, which is the brass. Uh, what's happening here, It's you can see it best if I zoom in, is we have a complementary rhythm. So the trombones are playing first, then the trumpets, back trombones and the horns, trombones, and then a little bit together. And when you add all of this up, it's just an ongoing triplet rhythm. And when you listen to it, it adds a really interesting dynamic in your orchestration. Then it's going from left to right and switching between the different instruments. look back on all of this also with the percussion edit the rhythms are all in triplets so just the percussion part um, but I add one layer of straight eight notes to it in the dulcimer that just adds to the overall texture that's going on and it creates an interesting polyrhythm I don't even know what to say about this next part. Everything that's happened before is kind of compressed into these couple of climax bars. Instead of two bars per chord, we now have one bar per chord and the melody is going on top of that. However, when we get to the part of the melody where, where it's... That is now compressed as well into just four notes. And that one bar sounds as if it's a bar with four chords instead of a four note melody. Um, I think it's clearer if I just play. I'm just in love with this C sharp to D movement here. I love it, I'm sorry. The orchestration of the melody, I beefed it up with a synth lead um, just to add some punch to it. And towards the end, the trumpet enters very loud and it took me ages to get this right. But I think it sits really well in the mix now. So the short, short strings here are a new variation on the D and the A motif. There's some more movement going on. And in the climax, it's all about the bass. <laughs> The brass here is quite loud. I would say almost unrealistic, well, maybe not almost, unrealistically loud. But when you add it in the mix, it's not necessarily very loud, but it adds that really brassy sound towards the entire texture. Let's discuss the top end a little bit. I have here a dulcimer and crotales playing quite a hefty Part, especially in the crotales which I usually use only for like accents because it's quite 
an overtone heavy instrument um, but here it has quite a heavy part again on the d and the a but i just use this along with the dulcimer to add a little bit of high end some sizzle on top of it the same thing i do with the percussion um, before the percussion was very tom heavy a lot of low and mid low percussion um, but here in this part i add some snares and stick sounds to it to add some mid and some low end it does alternate with the lower percussion it doesn't play the same rhythm and i use it as well to like introduce this middle part that's coming up And the sticks and snares they go on through the end of the piece as well to add more to the build up towards the end and to wrap things up let's talk about this ending which is basically a continuation of what came before the climax but well now with some things added one thing that i added is the main melody on top and uh, i added a female vocal a choir patch to add some air to the melody as well <laughs> From here we have the same piano melody but it's now again layered with a synth to add some beef to it and a choir patch a counter melody in the celli all adding to build up towards the end of this part one other thing to add here is an additional rhythm in the dulcimer as well instead of just the straight eights i was using earlier Because of this delay effect on the dulcimer, it also carries the transition towards the closing of the piece, along with the string harmonic that we use to open it as well. This last string section reminds us of how we've opened the piece, and I close it off with using the metallic percussion that I've used throughout the piece, because uh, it's just a nice way of letting it simmer out towards the end. That was it. I hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, the album is coming on October the 1st on Spotify. And if you liked it, please show, subscribe if you want. And as always, from my space to yours, I hope you have a great day.